This is George Newbern, the voice of Superman. This is Kevin Conroy, the voice of Batman. And you're listening to the DCAU Review, hosted by Cal and Liam. Streaming at DCAUReview.com and on your favorite podcast app. You're listening to the DCAU Review, hosted by Cal and Liam. Streaming on iTunes, Google Podcasts, and at DCAUReview.com. Now, here's today's episode. Welcome, everyone, to episode 30 of the DCAU Review. I am one of your co-hosts, one of the good brothers, Cal. Alongside me, as always, my good brother. He's been here from the very beginning. He's still here, folks. And he's the DCAU Twitter guru. It's my good brother, Liam. Liam, 30 episodes in. Yes, we're... uh... For just under a year we've been doing this, we've gone to 30 episodes, and uh, as hopefully our listeners know, we did a poll on Twitter over the last couple of weeks, asked what you wanted to see for our 30th episodes, threw out a bunch of different options, and uh, a dramatic come-from-behind victory for Secret Origins, aka the, the first three episodes of Justice League. Yeah. Uh, and here we are. Yeah, man. I- I'm excited. So, um, we... As we always do when we start a new series or we we begin discussing a series we haven't done so before, we kind of share some thoughts uh, on our memories on this. So, of course, this debuted in, what, 2001? All right, 2001. So it means I would have been 13, probably going on, if not 14, uh, would have put you at about 10 uh, when this debuted. Uh, I remember not, and of course this is before... We didn't have the internet and, like, yeah. didn't know about all this stuff. I remember our grandfather taped this off of Cartoon Network. We also didn't have cable. Yeah. So our grandfather taped this off of Cartoon Network for us. It was a huge surprise uh, when we learned about it. And sitting down and watching this off of videotape and just being blown away by seeing not only Batman and Superman, but the introduction of characters that we didn't even know existed in the DCAU. Yeah. Uh, really setting up uh, the future for what the DC animated universe would eventually become with you know more seasons of Justice League and Justice League Unlimited and the greatness of that. So, uh, any thoughts on or memories on on watching this episode or or the Justice League in general? Yeah, I mean, this is definitely one I think we saw more than any other episodes because even we had, we definitely had it on tape as you mentioned from our grandfather. We also eventually uh, was purchased uh, for us on on DVD. They basically did it as a uh, they basically just took out the, com- the credits and made it into a movie right. uh, on a single DVD. Uh, so we definitely watched this episode a lot. Um, yeah, that, that's probably the biggest part of, of uh, kind of learning more about... Like, I knew a little bit about... We had like some sporadic comics from the age, so we, we kind of knew there were other Green Lanterns. Right. Besides Kyle Rayner, who was the, you know, the Green Lantern of the comics at the time. Or, you know, we kind of knew... We knew the... You know, who the Flash was, obviously. And we, know, we knew who a lot of these characters were, but we didn't know them like that and uh, really begin to understand their origins and the you know, rogues we, right. were, we were batman and superman guys growing up right exactly so most of our you know most of our comic reading most of our show watching was mostly just batman and superman and obviously a little bit of batman beyond at the time yep so we that that was most uh, most of our exposure was the dcau versions of these characters so Getting to step into that larger world and uh, and learn all these new characters and, and go into the origins and of, of Martian Manhunter as they do in this episode and kind of realizing how cool and uh, interesting a lot of these characters are. Even someone like Hawkgirl who doesn't have a big role to play in the pilot here, who but she mentions oh she has this home planet of Thanagar, so she's an alien and that's right. like I remember I never knew like I may have known who Hawkgirl was or I certainly knew who Hawkman was, but I didn't know anything about. You know their crazy comic book origins and, and sure. some of that stuff, obviously that comes into play down the line. But so yeah, I just remember this. This definitely feels like it's it's a game changer, man. Like this is a completely different animal than anything. Well, it really uh, opens up the sandbox, man. Yeah. You, t- you take you had Gotham City, you had Metropolis, you had a little bit 
you know, some of the crossovers in the Superman animated series, of course, had Aquaman and Lobo, and Superman was much more of a sci-fi, open up the yeah. world, it go go into visit into outer space, get some get some you know, different dimensions, M- Mr. Mixius Spitlick, you yeah. know. You, so you Superman was a little bit more certainly widened the the scope of things, but this really just smashes the walls, man, <laughs> down like brings the walls down, you know. Yeah, and um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I think. I think uh, we might as well jump right into our scores here. So if somebody's listening to us for the very first time here, Liam, why don't we remind them what our scores are? Sure, yeah. So every week we rate uh, each episode or episodes that we review um, with the same four categories. Uh, The four are plot, uh, animation and visuals, music, and voice acting. Each category is blank out of 10, meaning our final score will be blank out of 40. And we can also throw out any uh, bonus points if the, if something we want to talk about isn't covered under those main four, or if we just want to give a special shout out to something, uh, something that tickles within the our episode, <laughs> a certain performance, anything, that we, we can always throw out some bonus points too. So to date, we've had one perfect episode. That just was, one. That was Heart of Ice, the, the classic Batman story. So... Uh, but it's not. But we have uh, watched a lot of great episodes, and, yeah. and here we go at, uh, at episode thirty of our show with episodes one, two, and three of Justice League. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see. So one of the first things uh, that we can jump into, obviously. So the first, the first episode. So on the DVDs and how it's presented is broken down into parts one, two, and three. I think it was originally, uh, you know, debuted as a an, a hour and a half long presentation yeah. of, of straight through. Um, of course, then it's broken down on, upon upon uh, re-airings in, into three different parts. But uh, your first part, I guess, is uh, sticks with characters that you know. It has, it's a lot of Batman. Batman doing investigations, a lot of Superman. Uh, Superman is, has been made essentially the world's defense yes. uh, against any invasions uh, due to a similar uh, the Superman 4 quest for peace yeah. style uh, world disarmament. Uh, all countries have decided to disarm their nuclear arms arsenals in a quest for peace at the behest of this sen- senator who was a former astronaut who had some sort of encounter with on mars with these uh aliens who we will who then invade right it seems like he's on the up and up and that he feels that he's just seen the larger world and that you know mankind isn't ready to decide that so we need this outside force we need the you know the symbol of good and of superman and, and I, that i mean that delves into as the quest for peace movie which i mean that movie is sort of well known for how terrible it is. It's a, it's a laughing style. Yeah, but I, I mean, I you have a you have it's a special I, place. I, in your I heart. love it a little bit, and I also think the basic idea of 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 how involved Superman should be with like world governments and deciding, you know, who who's allowed to have nuclear warheads and stuff. I think that's a really fascinating idea. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, in, in in Superman four, it's not explored particularly, you know, delicately. It's sure, kind of, you know, and then. Something happens in the moon, and it's, a, it's the nuclear crazy. man shows up. It's very wacky, but the, that basic idea, I do think, there's something interesting in there. And we've seen other projects that delve into it. Superman is an agent of the government in mm-hmm. in The Dark Knight Returns, oh, sure. and you know, it's it's an interesting. I mean, we talked about it back when we talked about Brave New Metropolis, and yeah, um, it, you know, it's it's definitely definitely explored further in Justice League with the Justice Lords and how Superman's power should be used as far as leadership over countries over over you know it should should he have more of a role than just saving cats out of trees correct he's very much a reactive type of hero he's, right. he's there to put out the fires when they start but so the idea of you know at the behest of the united states government uh him he's he's asked to basically disarm the entire world and so he does it because he feels that for the long-term health of the world that it's it's the right thing to do. I think it's a really interesting idea, and they they explore it there, and it's sort of Superman's willingness to be a pawn for this evil alien race. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I, I guess we can jump... Let's jump right into plot, Liam. Um, I went ahead... My score for plot uh, for this week's episode... Uh, I went ahead and gave this, as I pulled my notes up here, 
Um, my general thought was it's it's an interesting plot. And I think you said that a lot of it was borrowed from uh, Grant Morrison's run on Justice League. Yeah, the the first volume of, of Grant Morrison's uh, very celebrated JLA, where they uh, now that that wasn't meant as to be an origin story in there. That was like the reforming of the of the, sort of the classic Justice League. The Justice League in the '90s had been sort of like this sort of ragtag team where the, a lot of the big guns were pulled out of it and like right. Aquaman and Booster Gold and right. people like that were sort of given a chance to be more at the forefront of it. So the JLA run though established it more back as it being sort of the all-star team book. Of right. Superman, Batman, Green Lantern, Wonder Woman and you know, Martian Manhunter and The Flash. So um, and that so that kind of bar from there that in that in that book it was a, the White Martians invaded there then these aliens are never referred to as the White Martians, but it's sort of the same idea. They come from Mars. And they're white, and right. they don't like the sun. <laughs> right. So there's there's a lot of similarities there, and, and sort of um, Martian Manhunter sort of being at the at the center of this invasion, and um, so it definitely borrows from that. But uh, it, it's it's so it's interesting, and you pointed this out to me. The first the first entire part of this first episode. There's just Batman and Superman. It's just a Batman and Superman story for the beginning. Right. So they let you get comfortable with characters that you're that uh, you're familiar with. Obviously, you have a new casting with George Newbern as Superman. Yeah, it's the first time we get to hear him as Superman uh, rather than Tim Daly. Uh, but you're you're introduced to characters that you are familiar with. It's Batman and Superman working together, and then they slowly bring in you know a couple of, of new or, or familiar characters. There's a Flash cameo uh, very early on after the invasion starts. Starts. Yeah, uh, and again, it's it's a new Flash. It's Michael Rosenbaum this time. Who hashtag my Flash? <laughs> um, you know, Michael Rosenbaum begins his performance and, and run as the Flash that that will become legendary for sure. Um, and uh, then slowly you bring in the other characters. You have Wonder Woman who starts out, and there's a there's a brief origin. I think they do the origin for Wonder Woman uh, very tactfully. It's not focused very heavily on her, but it kind of gives you just a taste of who she is. Yeah. Um, and of course, her her backstory gets explored later on. Uh, and you do bring in two characters. There was a Green Lantern already in the DCAU. We know it was Kyle Rayner. Yep. He makes a cameo later on in the series, uh, but he this this Earth's uh, right now Earth's Green Lantern is uh, John Stewart, who they uh, they go into his backstory in in future episodes as well, and then of course they bring in the newcomer Hawkgirl, whose her origin story plays a huge role <laughs> yeah. uh, towards the end. Of, is it the first season or the second season? Uh, the end of the second, second season. End of the yeah. second season of Justice League. Her origin story really gets played out. So. Um, I, I think introducing it's hard to juggle so many introductions of new characters. You had to introduce essentially four to five new characters here, yeah. And I think it ends up being a Martian Manhunter story. Yeah. Um, you get a lot of his backstory, a lot of his interactions, and ultimately at the end of the episode, um, he gets the victory like him versus the grand what is it the imperium the grand imperium yeah yeah is uh is is tremendous there's some great lines delivered in there we'll we'll go into that in voice acting but um i i it's not perfect i think there's leaves some there's some some stuff that yeah, that's left I mean, to be desired po- post part 2 it's mostly just punching yeah it's a lot a lot of punching and they sort of they all you know they split up to go you know each attack a different one of these machines that's creating these brown clouds that blot out the sun um as you mentioned not crisis red they were yeah they, they were, should have been they should have been they red were, uh, they were these brown they they established that the aliens don't like the sun they're nocturnal creatures so they're they're blotting out the sun so the team split up uh superman and hawk girl get captured it appears batman has died yeah, that's um, a that's a cool part of the plot. Actually, I had forgot. I knew I had forgotten that they quote you know that Batman supposedly died and then how they brought him back. And that was a yeah. good good reveal. It ended up being a good reveal. Definitely, um, I gave I gave plot uh, because it's not perfect. There's there's definitely some holes in there. There's some stuff that I thought that could have been better. It's a lot of punching. Um, <laughs> you know, it's 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 new. It's certainly juggling that many characters too is a challenge. I, mm-hmm. I think for what they had to do, they did a pretty good job. You'll notice as we move on, there are certain episodes that not. It's very rare that every character is featured on every episode. Very just, true. Just so that you don't have that problem of balancing that. Um, so I gave plot 7 out of 10. What was your score? Uh, exact same. 7 same. out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's it, like I said, there's nothing... 
it's not it's not reinventing the wheel with the plot. Obviously, as we said, it's a lot of you know you it's a lot of introduction. You had to introduce all these the Justice League. You got to introduce the Senator character. You got to introduce Snapper Carr. Oh. You got to introduce uh, uh, you know the, sort of the general uh, who's sort of grumpy about Superman disarming <laughs> all of the the nuclear warheads. And it turns out he's right. Yeah, the, <laughs> but. Uh, but yeah, so there's there's a lot to juggle there. I went seven out of ten as well. It's 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 good and it's solid. And as far as an introduction to a Justice League, if you're mm-hmm. if you're not familiar, if you're trying to introduce a newer fan to that 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 they do a good job of setting up, as you mentioned, that first part. It's just Batman and Superman. They set up these guys who are the most capable, the greatest heroes we've ever seen. They're the world's finest, right? Yep. And even they can't handle this together. So the idea that they need more help, and so they go and and thanks to you know Jean reaching out psychically to all these different heroes, they all sort of unite. And there's a little bit of infighting, but for the most part, these are heroes, and so they are able to kind of put those little petty differences aside and. And fight together as a team and win, and it's you know a really nice triumphant win at the end. And, Agreed. And Superman sort of welcomes Jean into into the family, and there's sort of a nice little moment of Superman and, and Martian Manhunter bonding a little bit over being the last of their kind, mm-hmm. um, which I think is, is a really cool little touch. Agreed. So yeah, overall, r- very good. Seven. Yeah, out it's, of 10. it's a strong. It's a strong seven out of ten. All right, let's move to music, Liam. Um, Music is a little bit different, I think, in this, in that it's not straight up orchestral. It's seen more keyboards and um, organ. I don't know. Mm. Like it's, it's just, it's there. It's good. It's not distracting. I think the triumphant music at the end, uh, when the, when the sun finally breaks through the mm. alien ship. And the clouds start to roll away as the sun's the sun breaks through, and Superman sorts to sort of begins to fight back, and uh, I think that's very strong, and that ends up being kind yeah. of like the theme that rolls through the end of the episode. Um, I thought that was good. I think the rest of the episode it was interesting. We commented when Bat the the big reveal of Batman surviving happens. Yes. Um, they didn't. They used some other theme it wasn't the the batman theme i was yeah. like oh they should have gone with even if it was a changed up like lighter version of the batman mm-hmm. theme that they could have gone with the batman theme you didn't hear the superman theme mm-hmm. um i don't remember really a wonder woman theme there's a certain like there's certain triumphant music that plays when uh, green lantern first appears when wonder woman first appears but i, I mean i guess we'll find out as we go along uh, what officially becomes Their the, theme the wonder songs. woman or green lantern or flash theme songs but yeah, I, I thought music is pretty darn strong uh, through that the first scene of them teaming up. The actual very first scene of the episode where Batman and Superman confront three of the, the aliens who are disguised as scientists. Really good, like sort of a frantic pace to it, but it, it adds a lot to it. Um, so I went 8 out of 10. I really enjoyed the music. I thought that those final, uh, that, that final five minutes or so of, of them finally kind of They've they've been on a, they've been on defense for most of the episode, and once the sun starts to sort of affect the aliens, now like now's the time to strike, and it feels as, as we've said very triumphant and very yeah. like this is the superhero Victory. moment, victorious. This is, yeah, this is, here's the comeback. So yeah, I, I really enjoyed the music in this episode. I gave it seven out of ten. Uh, not it's different, very, <laughs> it's different. very different. It's a very different number than yours. All right, uh, let's move on to animation, Liam. Um, so here's the thing. This is our first. Uh, digital animation episode that we've watched, I yeah. think. Um, we haven't gotten into the digital episodes of Batman Beyond just yet. Um, it should be it, noted when we're watching the Batman the Animated Series, we are watching the original uh, correct. version. We are not watching the newly remastered HD version. We may we may watch a couple of those yeah. just to see. Yeah, I'm, point, I'm, I'm but, interested. Uh, I know you've taken a peek at those, but this yes. is it's 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 a stark contrast between what you're what we've been used to. Um, it's very bright, very vibrant. Yes. Very, but at the same time, it's it's almost, I don't know. It, it, there's a lot of light in this episode. It reminded me a little bit of some of the complaints that I had about Superman the Animated Series, where it just looks too clean almost, too bright. Hmm. Um, I also didn't like the backgrounds. I, I know that the, the, the when they're on, they spend a lot of time on the alien ship, and it's supposed to look alien, but it looked more like... Willy Wonka or like it, it, it was just kind of 
I don't know. It was distracting at some points to me. Um, I didn't really care for it. It's gonna t- it's gonna take a little bit to get used to. I think just the different animation um, style. So for that reason, I went with six out of ten uh, for the animation. I will will give kudos to the visual, the very slightly disturbing visual at the end, um, <laughs> where Jean is being attacked and the tentacles go like under his skin and through his face. Yeah, and then he gets like sucked into the Grand Imperium, and it's yes. like. It's really, uh, it's cool, you know, that he's shocking him, he's like torturing him, and you see the electricity going off and just his yeah. silhouette within the creature. Really cool visuals. And then the bubbling of the skin when he pulls him into the sun. Uh, really, really good. Um, but the other stuff was, it was just kind of too little too late for me. So I gave 6 out of 10. You? Uh, pretty close around there. Uh, 5 out of 10 for me. Okay. Um, the strong, I thought the strongest sequence as far as the action goes was the the scene where uh, Batman's being chased in the Bat plane. John's been injured, and and Superman's sort of lagging behind, dealing with some of the other ones. And a bunch of the alien ships attack, and they're the ship, the Bat plane is is damaged, and they're going down. And Green Lantern saves them, and then sort of the the full league unites there. Mm-hmm. That's really really cool. And ha- that scene happened to be at night, and maybe that's maybe oh, that's yeah. part of why yeah, that worked yeah. a little better. Is there's a little more shadow, there's a little more you places can hide, to hide. Yeah, you can hide a little bit more of those flaws. But uh, I mean, as far as I mean, we can talk about the design of everybody too, I guess here um, briefly. We, yeah, we don't need to talk about everybody. In great no, but the way. but the redesign uh, of Batman. Sure. The redesign yeah. of Batman. You have sort of it's sort of a little bit it's halfway, not quite halfway, but between the new Batman Adventures look and the Batman Beyond look. Mm-hmm. Longer the, ears. Longer ears. You have the heels on the boots. Uh, um, you have a you have a cape that. Is over his shoulders at all times. Yes. By the way, covers like goes down to his nips, basically. Yes. <laughs> it's a lot more of that that sweeping uh, cape. But uh, hashtag cape move. Hashtag cape move, and it's back, baby. We you haven't had, been able to talk about. Wait, it at you all. had three capes in this with oh. Martian Manhunter, Superman, and Batman. Right. You had triple the capes. That's true, and we have you know we have wing movement. Yeah, we have wing hair movement, movement now. Hair move. Oh my gosh, oh, so many movements. Lasso movement. But it's like we've been reviewing Batman Beyond for the last five weeks, so I haven't been able to talk about hashtag cape movement. <laughs> at all so i gotta get it all out now this is true um <laughs> but uh yeah I, I i thought that was kind of the strongest sequence in in, in any of the episodes was sort of the initial uh, team up of everybody and i i like the the one thing we noticed and i think it's probably known if you're listening to this podcast but a lot some of the characters have like really defined cheekbones like mm-hmm. superman does wonder woman does yep and it's not it's not necessarily bad it just looks Strange. It's a weird, yeah. It's and weird. I think the thing, the reason it looks strange is because they took them out after season one. Right. So you're used, so like, I know what the Justice League Unlimited character designs look like. Right. And I'm used to those versions of Superman and Wonder Woman and whoever else. So they, even though this was on model for season one, all most of season one looks like slightly off model because right. they changed the <laughs> right. model. Right. And I feel like I saw a lot more of Justice League Unlimited and, and season two of Justice League in reruns than I did of season one. So right. even though it's not off model, it feels like in your brain that it is just because it, they were still experimenting a little bit there. I get it. I get um, it, totally. But as far as, like, I, I like... We talked about that about back when we did uh, Speed Demons. I like this Flash design a lot more. Obviously, the, right. the darker red is the main color, mm-hmm. and the lighter red is sort of his highlight color. Uh, it's, it's basically the same design, otherwise. He doesn't have the black ring around his, his suit, but it's it's pretty basic. And then, yeah, we get our our first appearances of, of Hawkgirl and Wonder Woman and, and Martian Manhunter, who are all pretty much their comic book versions. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, some minor tweaks, but... Uh, they all they all they all look good. They all they all fit into this DCAU style yep. very well. I I agree. I agree completely. All right, uh, William. Let's move on to our final category, which is voice acting. Uh, tell the good people at home we got a whole new cast of people. We already talked mentioned briefly George Newbern is the new Superman, yes, sir. Uh, but we have a whole new cast of characters that we'll be getting used to here. Why don't you tell our good listeners at home uh, about our players in today's episode? Well, yeah. So we have the entire new Justice League to introduce. We yep. have uh, Maria Canales as Hot Girl. Mm-hmm. Uh, she doesn't have a big role to play here, but she's good. No, she's um, fine, and she gets her time to shine later absolutely. on in, in, in many more. Episodes. And again, as you mentioned, there aren't that many episodes that have all seven of them. So mm-hmm. it's like at a certain point, you're like, "Well, this character hasn't spoken in two minutes, so they have to have the a line right. here." Right. Uh, so, but uh, you have, of course, Susan Eisenberg as Wonder Woman, who is uh, 
to me is that's Wonder Woman. Right. Like I really like Gal Gadot as as Wonder Woman in the live action movies. Mm-hmm. Um, there's been some other you know other animated Wonder Woman, but it, come on, it's it's Susan. Like she's Wonder she, Woman. She is. Yep. Um, she, so she's very good here. Uh, Phil Lamar as Green Lantern. Speaking of that, as John Stewart. Yeah, he's real. Oh, he's so awesome. So good. He's so good. I mean, he's he's a voice acting legend. He's been in everything. He was he was Samurai Jack. He was Static Shock. He was uh, you know he's he's the judge on Family Guy. Right. Like he's he's been every. He's one of those guys, sort of like a you know a male Tara Strong or somebody that's just he's been everywhere and. Uh, such a versatile performer, and and he sort of in this episode kind of plays the military man. He's very straight laced here. He's yep. he's also like giving orders. He's di- dishing out tactics and stuff. So that I think that and that adds to his performance. Sort of adds to that sort of gruff, no nonsense uh, military man that we know. Yep. Uh, you have Carl Lumbly as as Martian Manhunter, who's yes. outstanding. He's out. Oh man, when the line that he gives when he pulls the the monster in the sun. Oh yes. my oh, gosh, it's so great. underground and shun the light. Why? Does it burn your pale, putrid skin? Ooh, that's one nasty sunburn. And, uh, and of course, we have Michael Rosenbaum as The Flash, who I, I adore that man. William's good personal friend, yes, Michael Rosenbaum. Uh, uh, <laughs> last year, or earlier this year, at, uh, at Austin Con, I got to meet uh, him as well as Tom Welling in a, in a group photo op uh, for for the Smallville show, which is part of my Mo- Michael Rosenbaum love. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, team. rumor had it you asked him to be your dad. Yes, maybe <laughs> to uh, adopt you. <laughs> uh, no comment. But uh, but yes, my, but also of course Michael Rosenbaum, the, the definitive uh, Wally West Flash here. He's good. Um, he's very good. Doesn't have a, again not a huge role. He's sort of just the comic relief here. But again, that gets he'll get he gets his character of gets plenty of fleshed out later. Um, yeah. And then aside from from that, our main cast we have we have Gary Cole as uh, the senator or the alien disguised as the senator J. Mm-hmm. Allen Carter, who you probably know uh, from uh, playing the dad in, in Talladega Nights, uh-huh. or the lead commentator in Dodgeball, Cotton, or, or the boss in Office Space, mm-hmm. perhaps most famously. Yeah, and uh, you also have a sort of veteran voice actor uh, Kevin Michael Richardson plays. Uh, the Imperium and and the General and a bunch of other voices. You also got Corey Burton's in there. Yeah, a little, little CB. So, uh, you know all of the uh, sort of the the stalwarts that you expect are there. Uh, really strong, really strong cast and everybody, uh, especially Carl Lumbly though. Like again, as you mentioned, this really is a a Martian Manhunter episode, mm-hmm. and um, th- from him sort of giving the origin of these aliens to his speech at the end as you mentioned when he confronts the Imperium to his very that last little bit of him and Superman sort of talking about being orphans is it's all so tremendous and a lot of that comes from from Carl Umbley so I give voice acting 8 out of 10 here I think it's really really strong um Maybe could have used a little bit more on the alien side. Agreed. Like they're again, it's just a, they're they're just understated. It's not bad. It's just yeah, it's I, sort I, of generic. I, I was guess. under. I'm sorry. You gave your score. Uh, yes, it was eight out of ten. Yeah, uh, mine is a very very similar, actually exact the same eight <laughs> out of ten. Also, um, and the reason reason was I, I my I was disappointed in the Imperium's voice. I thought it was just a little too plain. Uh, you know, he's a fine actor. Uh, but it was just a little too plain of a performance for me. I was expecting something a little bit more, you know, scary. Yeah. It's a weird character design, too. It's like a big floating <laughs> bubble, essentially. It looks like something out of SpongeBob, if I had yeah. to, Like the King Jellyfish in SpongeBob yes. or something. Yes. So, like, it's a weird character design as it is. And then it, it has this really human like normal guy voice um so you know i I took a couple points off for that but um this it's a strong cast it's only going to get stronger as we go through these episodes absolutely super excited uh for kevin conroy by the way don't miss don't miss don't miss the the legend the living legend uh we almost brushed over him but kevin conroy of course is as Bruce Wayne and Batman, um, it's just just good. And George Newbern is coming; in, it will come into his own also. I, Absolutely, I, I have a hard time going back and forth between him and Tim Daly, who I, I I think I give the slight edge to George Newbern. I think so too. I think there's a little more depth 
to New Bern's Agreed. portrayal. He's got a little more range of emotion. Yeah, and I, I don't necessarily know. I think uh, Tim Daly, who's, I mean, he's been on TV for years. His style of acting may just be more of a visual style, yeah. but, but his voice generally, whether he's... I mean, and there's cer- certain episodes that we've talked about if, if you want to go back in our archives on DCAUreview.com. Certainly there's many great performances by Tim Daly in Superman the Animated Series, but his voice is just... It's 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 similar. To, you know, it's, it's it kind of just gets louder. Right. Like, uh, when he's angry or happy or sad, it's, it's, it's just a very similar tone of voice, and that just might be how... Tim Daly talks. Right. So that might not be something he can really control, but George Newbern just seems to have a little... There's, like, there's some warmth, there's there's the heroic quality that you need of Superman, but it's... You still also feel like, okay, but really this is, you know, this is the this is the farm boy, like, at heart. There's there's, there's just a little more nuance to it, I think. Of course, yeah, I know you left... We, we had briefly mentioned it, but George Newbern's uh, credits include playing uh, the son and father of the bride, oh, one and course. two. Of course. Um, and, of course, uh, also playing Rachel's weird boyfriend on... Uh, <laughs> that starts out wearing, like, a, a wig and, and beard on Friends. He has, awesome. a, he has a Friends episode. I think it's the episode where he's really close with his sister or something like that, so they're like relationship is really weird <laughs> uh, but uh yeah george newburn good good job all right william uh i think that well there we go it's the bonus point sound i do in fact have a bonus point you got any bonus I points i do not have a bonus okay point, so. i do have a bonus point so bonus point for me liam is going to be for the phenomenal uh intro to these episodes oh, yes the, the title sequence for these episodes wow the, but from the music we didn't talk about it uh, in actual music, but the Justice League theme song. Oh my goodness! Yeah, so it's, it was uh, written by the actual theme, and the episodes themselves were sc- were scored by uh, Lolita Ritmanis. Nice. Uh, she's uh, becomes a re- one of the regular uh, composers. I believe she may have started on Batman Beyond. I don't know that for sure, but certainly she and, and Christopher Carter and some of the, some of that new age as, as Shirley Walker had retired. And sort of took over here. Um, she, it's phenomenal. It's such a perfect oh piece of music. Oh my gosh, it's so so good. And pairing that with the animation, it's all original animation, all computer generated animation of the Justice League. You know, they start the. It's a little cliche. They're all walking in slow motion towards the screen at the yes. beginning, but then that immediately breaks into. Each individual character, Batman throwing the battering, Superman busting through the wall, you know, Martian Manhunter going, ch- you know, ch- sh- uh, changing, changing shape, shift, uh, shape shifting. You have then Wonder Woman with her bullets, uh, the bullets and bracelets. You got mm-hmm. Green Lantern just after he's powered up his ring. Yeah. You got Flash sprinting across the street, screen, and then you just have Hawk Woman just She's kind of like floats. floating. That's <laughs> um, but it's it's a great sequence, and paired with the music, uh, it's definitely worth a bonus point for me. Um, awesome. So that brings our final score. So I have a final score here of, let's see, 20... I didn't do the math beforehand. Uh, 29 out of 40, it looks like. What about you? And I have a completely different 28 out of 40. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was behind the scenes. We didn't even talk about what our scores were before we went on here. So no. this was completely uh, completely uh, independent of each other. We, we gave very similar scores, as tends to happen quite often on this we're show. We're just but, too similar. We're brothers. <laughs> but, uh, hey, you know, every once in a while there's, there's a disagreement there. And we have an alarm for we're it. You might, if you listen, it. you know, over the next few weeks, you might even hear it once or twice. It's, it's an occasional uh, disagreement alarm. Yes, it, it happens so rarely that we had to have a, a sound effect introduced to mark the occasion. That's right. All right, Liam. Well, uh, before we begin our wrap-up, uh, I do want to announce, we mentioned it at the end of last week's episode, we have an exciting giveaway promotion that we're going to be doing here to our listeners, just as a thank you. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, we are looking to increase the amount of followers on our Twitter page, so we're hoping uh, to get up over 250 followers on Twitter. We're hanging around right now at about 140 or so. So there's going to be a tweet that you send out that uh, is going to be required for people to uh, retweet it, like it, and then also they have to be following us. And they also, once we reach 250 followers, we'll announce it and they will have to tweet us the secret word. And Liam, why don't you tell them what the secret word is? Tell the secret word is 
Martian. Martian. Martian is the secret word. Make sure. Okay, so we're going to send the tweet out. We're going to, you have to like the tweet. You have to retweet the tweet. You have to make sure you're following us. Once we hit the 250 mark, we will announce it. And then you have to send us the secret word. We will draw a winner from that. And the winner will receive a copy of the Batman the Animated Series game Almost Got Him. Ooh. Which is super exciting. Of course, based on the episode we have not yet reviewed, but is one of the classic episodes of Batman the Animated Series, uh, I'm going to briefly read the description here. It says, The villains of Gotham City have gathered for a poker night and to share stories about the time they nearly dispensed with that troublesome Cape Crusader Batman. Little do they know that the Dark Knight is in their midst, disguised as one of their own. Which is the plot, obviously, of the episode of Almost Spoilers. Gotham. Sorry. Will the rogues be able to suss out the bat with in their belfry before he can clandestinely subdue them. This variant on the popular werewolf-style deduction game inspired by the memorable Batman the Animated Series episode Almost Got Him adds a poker element to the proceedings, requiring participants to craft poker hands to activate their special abilities when the lights go out. Take on the personas of classic Batman baddies in a game where everyone has something to hide and no one is safe. With poker hands guiding the action, players have something to talk about. Everyone has an important role. No bystanders in this game. Too often, social deduction games begin with random accusations just to get the ball rolling. No so here. That's what it says. No so here. <laughs> no so here. Players can request poker cards from other players and often see what cards other players are taking. Enemies are made when someone takes the card you wanted. Now you have a reason to be suspicious of another player. So it's a really cool game. Uh, I, sort of along the lines of a, it's pretty popular. A Secret Hitler is a version of this. Okay. Yep. Um, Werewolf, as they mentioned, is I guess the type of or the genre of board game. But yeah, basically, most of you are on the same side, except for the one player who's secretly, you know, in this case, Batman working uh, against you. Uh, so yeah, it's it's a really cool concept. I've actually played this with uh, with a friend yep. at a friend's house uh, over uh, one of the holidays last year. It's really fun. Yep. So we, we just want to give one away as a thank you to listening to our podcast. So uh, that will be coming up in the next uh, couple of days. As soon as this, this episode is released, we'll uh, send out the tweet and uh, reminding you about how to participate in our contest. So thank you for listening to us. Thank you for making it, uh, helping us make it to 30 Absolutely. episodes. Thank you for interacting with us. Liam, uh, as we mentioned already, uh, in case the people who are listening here don't know, where can they find you on Twitter so they can get involved in this contest and so they can tweet us their thoughts on Justice League Secret Origins? So you can follow us on Twitter at DCAU Review. Uh, this will be the our, our contest tweet will be the pin tweet at the top of our page. So if you just go to twitter.com slash DCAU review, it'll be the first tweet you see when you load up our page. There you go. Um, you can look at us on Twitter. We'll put the contest there. We'll, we'll post a link. We'll probably just post a link to the Twitter, honestly. Yeah. So you can just follow us on Twitter. Yeah. But uh, uh, we do have a Facebook page if you if you prefer to interact <laughs> that way. We don't really uh, use it because uh, it's it's very difficult. Uh, to do so. Mark Zuckerberg is the Grand Imperium. That's it's true. Just, he is just, the Imperium. Yeah. And, I mean, he's an alien. Look at yeah, him. Look at his him. face. He does have no emotion. <laughs> anyway, uh, so maybe he's are... a white Martian in disguise. <sighs> that would make a lot of sense. Oh, spooky. Would make a lot of sense. <laughs> he's trying to. Never mind. Anyway, <laughs> you can also stream every one of our uh, previous 29 episodes right from DCAUreview.com. We can break it. We break it down by category. You can search by villain, series, oh. um, you know, it, series villain <laughs> uh it's great uh you can make sure you check that out episodes are always streaming there we stream saturday mornings at 10 a.m nine central nine central uh so be sure to check us out uh on there anything else liam for this episode yeah i mean uh again if this is happens to be your first episode obviously thanks for listening but you can definitely check us out we've done this is now uh, with this episode today covering justice league we've done at least one episode on all four of the of the big four shows uh, I guess technically it's five if you count Unlimited as a separate show, but I kind of fold that it's, all under the Justice, Justice League umbrella. League. So of the big four, we've now done at least one on each of them. As you as uh, you mentioned, Cal, you can you can find all of those in the archives at dcaureview.com. Uh, definitely subscribe to us on iTunes or on the Google Podcast app if you yes. are a non-Apple product user. Yeah. And uh, if you have time, leave us a review. Leave us, uh, give us five stars. Leave us a review. I know that's kind of a hassle, but it really does help us to... Uh, get more uh, more eyeballs slash ear drums on the podcast so um, 
So if you, if you are willing to do that, if you enjoy what we're doing, uh, we'd appreciate that. But either way, we thank you for listening. Absolutely. Well, that will wrap us up for today. I am Cal. And I'm Liam. And we will talk to you on the next episode of the DCAU Review. Bye-bye.